He's uh, the new Raiders head coach, Josh McDaniels, of course, many years as the Patriots offensive coordinator and uh, won six Super Bowls with that team. Nice hoodie you got there with your Raiders gear. What'd you do with all your Patriot gear? We haven't done anything with it yet. Uh, I, I, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't been back home since I came out uh, Thursday and uh, I'm sure we'll find, find good use for it. Uh, you in a hotel out there in Vegas? Yeah, yes, I am, <laughs> but not on the strip, <laughs> not, not on the strip. I'm a little uh, off the strip a little bit in a little quieter place. What was the conversation like with coach Belichick when you told him you were leaving? Yeah, that was, uh, you know, that was a very important uh, conversation for me and Bill and I, I think have a deep respect for one another. Um, I'm certainly grateful for all the time that I've spent there and everything that he's done for me and my family. Um, not easy conversations to have. Um, you know, I, I knew it would take a special uh, place for me to leave where I was at. Um, and I, and I communicated that with Bill, um, with Mr. Kraft. Uh, and again, those were, those were emotional conversations and rightfully so, uh, we, we spent a lot of time together. They've done so much for me in my career. Uh, and I'm super grateful for the time that I spent there. Can you answer this question uh, honestly did the Patriots try to trade for Derek Carr last season I I, I know nothing about any of that <laughs> oh that's the right answer but it just shows how much you love Derek Carr yeah yeah, yeah Derek look I I'm excited about this um, Derek and I had a chance to talk the other day had a great conversation uh, I've competed against him a number of times in his career he's done a lot of great things in this league took this team to the playoffs uh you know, was, was super competitive all year long. And, you know, it's and now it's exciting to join forces here and, and see what we can do to put the best group around him. I love the nucleus there. I mean, you, you got your quarterback, you got your running back, you got your tight end. Um, I, I love Crosby, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you, how close do you feel? I, you're in a very, very competitive division here. But yeah, no question. Um, yeah, no, look, we have we have good players and uh you know, in the National Football League, every year there's change. Every year there's a roster construction that needs to take place. And uh, this will be no different for us. Um, I'm excited to partner with Dave Ziegler and, and in that process and try to uh, improve this football team in every way that we can. But there's no doubt that they had a they had a successful season. Uh, it didn't finish the way uh, that, that anybody, you know, wants to finish. You know, it happens for one of us out of 32. But um, you know, getting to the postseason, you know, four guys in the Pro Bowl here coming up this week. Uh, there's definitely some talented players on this team that we're going to get to know. Uh, and we're looking forward to, to that process. Best day you ever had as a member of the Patriots was what? Oh, boy. Um, my favorite uh, my favorite memory was probably the 14 Super Bowl against Seattle. Um you know, and we were fortunate, uh, so blessed to have so many great memories there. Um, I think if, if there was one particular day that I uh, might have enjoyed more than the rest, um, it was it was the first time that we had actually won a Super Bowl uh, where I had where I had children. And, uh, mm. I, you know, my two oldest kids were at the game and, and got to share in that celebration on the field afterwards with my wife, uh, my father. So, um, you know, that was it was it was a 10 year gap. In, in terms of us being able to to win one of those and and to to realize that again and and live through that with your family and your children, it was pretty special. Yesterday was the anniversary of the Malcolm Butler interception. Was it? Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't even know that. That's pretty cool. I was at the I was at the goalpost because I'm gonna, okay. I'm handing out the trophy uh, yeah. right after the game, and I'm I'm thinking as Russ goes back because I'm watching Marshawn Lynch. Because I'm just saying, I'm going to watch. I had my phone out. I'm going to watch Marshawn Lynch go right in for a touchdown here. And then all of a sudden, he didn't get it. Russ goes back, and I go, oh, bleep. And then I didn't know Malcolm had the interception. None of us did. None of us did. I I couldn't tell what happened. I knew there was a big cheer, and and from where we were sitting, you know, we were over there on the bench at the 50-yard line, and it was kind of like, you know, it's down here to the left, and you're not sure – Nobody had any idea what happened. There was just a big roar, and then we were grateful that Malcolm made that incredible play. He brought it up two days after the Super Bowl when we had him on, and he said Bill walked him through that play yeah. Wednesday of Super Bowl week. Yep. 
Yep. It happened multiple times, actually. Um, I remember, you know, we practiced those types of situations many times. And um, I think there was a lot of guys because Seattle had used that concept uh, with multiple personnel groupings and formations and so on. So there was a lot of our defensive players that I think were prepped and ready for the type of play that was. Um, and we're just fortunate that Malcolm, you know, made such a great play on the ball. What would you have called in that situation? <laughs> I don't know. That's a great question, you know, because hindsight's always twenty twenty. Um, you know, and and I think you w- what you would call there is the play you had the most confidence in. When I was in that similar situation um, in the Atlanta Super Bowl a couple years later, um, we used our two point plays, and so you know you you practice those for those types of situations. Uh, you don't always have to use a two point play on, you know, on a two point play. You can use it at the one or two yard line in a critical situation. And so um, that's what we had used in 16 um, in a similar scenario uh, when we found ourselves in that spot. Did you ever take it personally when Tom changed your play? No, never. No, he, he had. Well, I might have I might have thought mine was better at times, but, you know, we 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 knew that he understood and and had a tremendous grasp on everything he did. And so whenever that happened, uh, he always had a good reason for doing so. If I told you a month ago that Brady was going to be retired, what would you have said? Um, I would have been surprised, you know, Um, obviously he had such an, a tremendous season this year. I mean, statistically and otherwise, and took his team to the postseason and had a chance to make another run. Um, he's such a competitive guy. And I've always felt like, you know, if Tom was playing at a high level, which obviously he was this year, that he would probably keep playing. I think we all kind of, you know, all of us that have been around him and gotten to know him, know him so well, probably assumed he would play until he just couldn't do it anymore. Um, and so when he, I talked to him the other night and, uh, you know, heard the news, it was, it was kind of shocking, you know, and, um, such a, such an important and, uh, you know, integral part to the league's history and especially the last 22, 23 years here. I mean, he's, he's kind of been a mainstay in all those important conversations about who's going to win the Super Bowl and what teams are, you know, really in it and all that. And, um, you know, we'll miss him. I'm sure we will as a league. Uh, I'll miss him in terms of seeing him play as a, as a former coach of his uh, and, and look forward to his next chapter. I'm sure it's going to be successful, whatever he chooses to do. You were 32, I think, when you got the Broncos job. I think you're now 45. What's the difference yep. between Josh McDaniels at 32 as a head coach and Josh McDaniels at 45? Yeah, I, I didn't think I don't think I had much wisdom then. You know, I knew a little football. Um, I'd been around, you know, a good organization for eight years and had learned some things about, you know, what my job entailed there and tried to do it to the best of my ability. But really learned a lot about, you know, the the important parts to each area of the organization, how much people uh, need your support, need your impact on a daily basis and how much they value that and their contribution and understanding how they fit into the bigger picture. And I think I have a much different perspective on things now. Um, I have four kids. I've been a parent for a, uh, a lot longer now than I was then. And I think I've just grown in so many ways from, the, from that failure and, and tried to implement that in the day-to-day process that I've used as a coach you know, in the last 10 to 12 years. So I'm thankful for the opportunity to try it again. All right. Help me understand this. Raiders owner Mark Davis said that you told him that Tom Brady fumbled on the tuck rule play. (laughs) I had to play the other side of the fence when I came here. I I saw the facility and I said, the first thing I'm going to say to break the ice is that it was a fumble. And so uh, I, I felt like I ingratiated myself to him pretty well right off the bat. If you were still in New England and you saw Mark Davis, it probably wouldn't have been a fumble. Yeah, but. <laughs> probably. Probably. I'm part of Raider Nation now, so it was a fumble. Well, congrats on this, and uh, we appreciate your time, Josh. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Dan. I appreciate it. That's Josh McDaniels. He is the new head coach of your Las Vegas Raiders.